someone tagged me, and it was a picture of, of Benny Hinn, a recent show like a day or two ago. And, and there's the caption, time to buy heavenly oil for your lamp. And the person tags me and Sam Storms and says, oh, yeah, Benny Hinn's a brother. Right. Let's listen at the end of that 30-minute broadcast. But it's time to give to the Lord's work. The information is on the screen for you. You can so you'll see it right now on the platform or go to, the, to our website or you can text. That, that was it. That was the horrific, demonic, terrible fundraising, the manipulative, twisting fundraising. So here's the thing. After watching a short clip of Benny Hinn, Dr. Michael Brown believes he can speak with authority on the topic of Hinn's new anti-prosperity teaching. I thought there's a half hour of carnal manipulative fundraising. Instead, that was, that was the fundraising at the end of the broadcast. All I'm saying is, what are we doing? Analyze it fairly. Analyze it fairly. So this is the thumbnail for the video that uh, somebody sent to Dr. Michael Brown and claimed that this proved that he was still teaching the prosperity gospel. And Dr. Michael Brown scrolled to the end of the video and saw no great prosperity claims. He didn't look at any other videos and he didn't see all the seed sowing prosperity teaching that's taking place on the Benny Hinn YouTube channel. What are we doing? Analyze it fairly. Well, I don't think it's fair when you overlook all of the prosperity teaching as you claim that you've found no evidence of prosperity teaching in the one video you briefly glanced at. Here's a video that Benny Hinn put up on his YouTube channel just two days before Dr. Brown made his video. I want to pray with you today that God will give you a financial miracle this coming week. I really have faith for this. God's word is very clear that as a righteous person, you are blessed with prosperity. Now, there's a few things that you and I need to do to see that prosperity come our way. Prosperity is not some accident that happens with some people. Prosperity comes as we apply God's laws. Giving is the key to increase. Now, some of you are facing a, an immediate uh, problem financially. Listen to what the Bible says. And we're about to pray because I believe you're about to come out of your problem, financial problem. But you have to listen to the Lord. Even though you've heard that maybe before, or you've read that maybe before, Faith comes by hearing today, not by what we heard in the past. So Psalm 126, verse 5 and 6 declare, They that sow in tears, they that sow in tears. There are times when you have to sow in pain and tears. There are times when you can't sow when there's good things going on. This is a bad time because it's the time for tears, it says. Shall reap in joy. So when difficulty comes, the best thing I can do the only way out of crisis, financial crisis, is by giving to the Lord in tears. Sometimes it demands pain before God will even move. He that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed. Precious seed means there's not much left, you know. Shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him, bringing the harvest with him, bringing the most wonderful blessings with him. He returns with a lot of blessings. Thank you, Jesus. You need to sow right now. Because as you sow right now, you will see the miracle begin. You know, in Proverbs 10, 4, it says, The hand of the diligent, the hand of the diligent maketh rich. In other words, the giving hand. We're, we're diligent in giving. We're diligent in doing what God has given us to use in our hands. He'll bless the work of your hands, the Bible says. So right now, let's act on this. Let's act right now. God will do something powerful for you as you act on his blessed promises. So, Lord, as they lay their hands right now on that phone or that laptop or that check or that instrument that is in their hand, Lord, that they're going to use to sow, in Jesus' holy name, Lord, I pray for a breakthrough over their finances. I pray for a blessed release of funds in the name of Jesus. Somebody tagged me on Facebook. I don't see 99% of posts, 99.9% .9 of posts and comments well, I've got you beat, Dr. Brown. I don't see 100% of anything going on on your Facebook page because you blocked me. And I don't know why you would do that. Oh, that's right. Yeah, this was a pretty big deal in 2017. I'll put a link to this very extensive article in the description. Okay, now that I have your attention, I want to play the full clip of what Dr. Brown said leading up to the comments about Benny Hinn. But someone tagged me, and I saw this one, and it was a picture of, of Benny Hinn, 
a recent show like a day or two ago. And, and there's the caption, time to buy heavenly oil for your lamp. All right, it's time to buy heavenly oil for your lamp. And the person tags me and Sam Storms and says, oh yeah, Benny Hens a brother, right. Okay, so that, that statement there, first, I don't even know what it means. It's time to buy heavenly oil for your lamp. I don't know what it means, but if it's suggesting that by donating money, you are getting heavenly oil or something like that, obviously manipulative, obviously wrong, obviously foolhardy. Do I believe that as, as you, you sow and you bless other ministries and you give to the poor, and you give to the poor, and you give to the poor and you help that, that you store up treasure in heaven in the process? Sure, the word's clear on that. But whatever that, whatever that caption is, to me is, is utterly ridiculous. The, the excellent chances that Benny Hinn never even saw it himself, had nothing to do with it, that someone just posted it from his ministry. Okay, greater oversight, fine. But I actually, I wanted to see what was on the video. I thought, okay, let's see how terrible and horrific this fundraising video is. What it was, was him talking with his son-in-law, Michael Koulianos, about Jesus' image. I will be making more content about the cult of Jesus' image, and that's exactly what it is. It's a very dangerous organization, and Dr. Brown is either covering for it or he has no clue. It's through Jesus' image that Benny Hinn is trying to appeal to a younger audience, and he will tone down the seed-sowing prosperity talk, and he'll try to sound more like Bill Johnson in those contexts. And about what God's doing there, and about the spiritual hunger of the young people. And now, this is the horrific, terrible, heretical fundraising Let's listen at the end of that 30-minute broadcast. But it's time to give to the Lord's work. The information is on the screen for you. You can sow your seed right now on the platform or go to, the, to our website or you can text. That, that was it. That was the horrific, demonic, terrible fundraising, the manipulative, twisting fundraising. So here's the thing. Dr. Michael Brown is known for being the guy who never can take the time to do any research. He just can't be expected to look into the false teachers that he doesn't really endorse, but he never really gives you the full picture of what they might be doing wrong either. In fact, in many cases, he tends to lean towards propping them up, as you see him doing in this video with Benny Hinn. And amazingly, he's unaware that Benny Hinn is doing great damage on the continent of Africa. While Benny was in Kenya, they put up this video on the same exact day, claiming that it was being streamed live. Actually, it was just a recording. But let's take a look and see if he teaches any of this seed sowing prosperity stuff. I want to talk to you today as my partner and friend about the three secrets to prosperity that I have discovered in God's Word and in my experience. Three amazing secrets the Bible gives us on how to prosper and be blessed. I hope I don't spoil the uh, fun here, but I'm going to go right to the end of the video and you're going to hear him say the same thing he always says, which is you need to give a lot of money if you want to bring in a lot of money. The more you give, the more you will get in return. So sow your seed right now. Giving money to Benny Hinn is obedience to God. It's the same thing as obedience to God. So God blesses your obedience. So send in that money right now. Do you need a big harvest or a small harvest? Oh, it's just, you know, I need a big harvest. Okay, then give generously. Give cheerfully. Give abundantly. If we sow little, we'll receive little. If we sow much, we'll receive much. So this false teaching formula has been around for many decades. Basically, if you give money in obedience to God to such and such a ministry, God promises to give you a certain amount in return. It's just false. And even though Dr. Michael Brown would agree with that, he will not call out Benny Hinn as someone guilty of teaching this very thing, the thing that I'm showing you he's teaching. Nobody is putting words in Benny Hinn's mouth. He's doing it all by himself. And I'm especially going to show you some of the ways he twists the Bible horribly. Lord, I thank you for your word, and I pray today you'll bless your people, Lord, with prosperity and abundance and increase in Jesus' name. And God's people said, Amen. Now listen, God promised us abundance, not lack. None lacked among them, the Bible says in the book of Acts. None lacked among them. Well, unless Benny Hinn wants to give up all of his worldly possessions and join some sort of Christian commune, this verse isn't really applicable to what he's saying. This is a descriptive passage. It's not a prescriptive passage. In other words, this isn't giving us the rules as to how we should live. This is about the early church sharing everything together so that no one would be in need. And it has nothing to do with giving money to a TV evangelist so that you can then in turn become prosperous yourself. And none will lack among us if we do what the Word of God declares that giving is the key. Prosperity is promised to those who live righteously, obediently. The minute they sowed seed, the minute that sacrifice was given, the water came. Are you looking today 
to be blessed by God and you don't know where it's coming from, God says, get ready. I'm about to bless you. And all you have to do is give that offering. So thank you for being with me today and let's get into the word. First of all, everyone faced in the Bible, everyone faced recession and famine. Think about Abraham, yet God prospered him. Think about Isaac, yet God prospered him. Think about Jacob, yet God prospered him. Or Elijah, God prospered him. Or Elisha, the saints all experienced times of famine, yet they prospered. What was those, what was the key in their life? What were the keys we need to look for in their life? Number one, Proverbs 8 gives us the first key, and I believe a secret that God reveals to his people. Verse 17 says, I love them that love me. I'm reading Proverbs 8, 17. I love them that, that love me, and those that seek me early will find me. Riches and honor are with me, yea, durable riches and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold, yea, than much fine gold, and my revenue than choice silver. I lead in the way of righteousness, in the midst of the path of judgment or justice, that I may cause those that love me to inherit substance, and I will fill their treasures. Number one, loving the Lord, loving Jesus puts you in line to prosper. It's the Word of God. Well, Benny did read the Word of God. This is a poetic passage, though, and it's all about wisdom. It's right there at the beginning of the passage. I, wisdom, dwell with prudence, and I find knowledge and discretion. The fear of the Lord is hatred of evil, pride and arrogance, and the way of evil, and perverted speech I hate. I have counsel and sound wisdom. I have insight. I have strength. By me, kings reign and rulers decree what is just. By me, princes rule and nobles all who govern justly. This whole passage is using personification. It's a literary device that gives human characteristics to non-human things or inanimate objects. The non-human things can be animals, objects, or even a concept. And the book of Proverbs is especially known to have a lot of different forms of personification, like in Proverbs 14.1 when it says that Lady Wisdom has built her house. Proverbs is all about wisdom, so it's trying to use as many literary devices as it can to help people to understand wisdom. But Benny Hinn doesn't care about any of that. He's just strip mining the Bible so he can take things out of context, so he can make it seem like they have something to do with what he's talking about, which always gets back to the issue of send Benny your money. So it was right in the middle of this passage that Benny started reading at verse 17. I love those who love me and those who seek me diligently find me. That's wisdom talking. Riches and honor are with me, with wisdom. Enduring wealth and righteousness are with wisdom. Wisdom says, my fruit is better than gold, even fine gold, and my yield than choice silver. I walk in the way of righteousness in the paths of justice, granting an inheritance to those who love me and filling their treasuries. This is a very poetic passage that's supposed to be encouraging people to seek after wisdom, but Benny Hinn has turned it into a passage that's supposedly telling you that you're going to be prosperous, if you send money to Benny Hinn, of course. Now, when we talk about prosperity, people think about money. No, no, no. It's more than money. It's no lack. No lack in life whatsoever in the things we need to live this life with prosperity with God's blessings, with abundance. We can pay our bills and have more left over. That's the word of God. Running over blessings is what the Bible promises. So number one, loving the Lord. Number two, number two is loving and doing his word. Job, let's go to Job 22. Oh, this is such a blessed portion again of the word of God. So the Bible tells us very clearly, verse 21, acquaint now thyself with him and be at peace. Thereby good shall come unto thee, living a righteous, holy life through the word of God. Loving the Lord is number one. Two, it says, acquaint yourself with the Lord, be at peace. And the only way you can acquaint yourself with God is through his word. Thereby good shall come unto thee. Receive, I pray thee, the law from his mouth and lay up his words in thine heart. That is so important that we receive the word from the Lord himself to our hearts as we read the word and we receive the word in our hearts. Then it says this, If thou return to the Almighty, all through the power of the word, thou shalt be built up. Thou shalt put away iniquity far from thy tabernacles. And then, and then, shalt thou lay up gold as dust. I'm reading Job 22, 24. Then shalt thou lay up gold as dust, and the gold of Ophir as the stones of the brooks. Yea, the Almighty shall be your defense, and thou shalt have plenty of silver. You know, this is some truly world-class skating around the scriptures in order to force them to say something that they don't actually say. 
Benny Hinn is intentionally twisting God's word in order to enrich himself. So Benny is reading Job chapter 22, verses 21 to 25, and he's reading it in the King James Version, and it only works in the King James Version. Look at the last two verses. Then shalt thou lay up gold as dust, and the gold of Ophir as the stones of the brooks. Yea, the Almighty shall be thy defense, and thou shalt have plenty of silver. Wow, that sounds like a promise of prosperity, doesn't it? And this is where the blessings come, you see? In Job 22, 24 to 25, Then shalt thou lay up gold like dust, and the gold of Ophir as the stones of the brooks. Yes, the Almighty will be your defense, and thou shalt have plenty of silver. This is talking about unexpected abundance. Look at the same passage in the Legacy Standard Bible. And put your gold in the dust, and the gold of Ophir among the stones of the brooks, then the Almighty will be your gold and choice silver to you. It's completely different. All of the modern translations are the opposite of what Benny Hinn said in the King James, which in this particular instance is a faulty translation of the original text. Here's that same passage in the New American Standard Bible. And put your gold in the dust, and the gold of Ophir among the stones of the brook, then the Almighty will be your gold and choice silver to you. Here's the ESV. If you lay gold in the dust and gold of Ophir among the stones of the torrent bed, then the Almighty will be your gold and your precious silver. You see the theme here? This is about choosing God over gold. Now listen to Benny again as he reads verses 24 and 25. Then shall thou lay up gold as dust and the gold of Ophir as the stones of the brooks. Yea, the Almighty shall be your defense and thou shalt have plenty of silver. And verse 24 says, if you do that, you'll have gold like dust. Look at it. Then you will lay gold as dust. It's in the scriptures. You receive the word. You begin to live it. God will prosper you. He'll even bless your mistakes. Let's read that whole passage in the New Living Translation. Submit to God and you will have peace. Then things will go well for you. Listen to his instructions and store them in your heart. If you return to the Almighty, you will be restored. So clean up your life. If you give up your lust for money and throw your precious gold into the river, the Almighty himself will be your treasure. He will be your precious silver. Oh yeah, this passage is all about how you need to be obedient to God by sending money to Benny Hinn so that he will in turn bless you financially. Not. <laughs> But hold on, I've only given you about half the story of how bad this Bible twisting is. You see, this passage is not a passage that we should take literally because it's from Eliphaz. And he's actually making a speech in the book of Job about how Job is at fault for all the bad things that happened to him, even though that's not really the case at all. Eliphaz is actually kind of a Benny Hinn back in the day. He's the worst friend Job could have ever asked for. I'm just going to read this from the ESV Study Bible. A prose account of the fall and restoration of the pious Job frames the book as a whole. Here, readers meet a blameless man whose peace and prosperity are tragically disrupted when, unknown to him, God points him out to Satan, and the question posed in chapter 1 verse 9, does Job fear God for no reason, appears to be the leading concern of the prose and it receives a full and satisfactory answer by the book's conclusion. Within those prose bookends, though, a dramatic poetic dialogue unfolds as readers listen to the main protagonist in the story. Job's soliloquies bracket three rounds of impassioned debate with his quote-unquote friends, Eliphaz, Bildad, and Zophar. Their dialogue descends from intuitive integrity in Job and sympathy from his friends at the beginning to embittered self-justification in Job and outrageous accusation from his friends in which chapter? Chapter 22. So this whole passage is Eliphaz going off the rails and accusing Job of a whole bunch of horrible things that Job never did. And he concludes by saying, if you obey God and do all the things you're supposed to do, then of course God will bless you. God will take care of you. But Eliphaz is the bad guy in the book of Job. He's the guy you're not supposed to listen to. And yet Benny Hinn is using his passage as if it was expressing a universal truth that we can all apply to our lives by sending money to Benny Hinn. And then of course we'll get the results that Benny Hinn is promising. Boy, it's just too bad there isn't some kind of a, I don't know, like a Hebrew expert, you know, somebody who really knows the Bible, who could explain this more thoroughly and could expose Benny Hinn for the false teacher that he is. 
Here's what's really amazing. Dr. Michael Brown can never watch any videos from Sid Roth, from Kenneth Copeland, from Benny Hinn, but for some reason he actually claims to have watched a Benny Hinn video, and it's the one time he can use that Benny Hinn video to make his critics look bad. But I just said, and Sam said, if your description of Benny Hinn is true, we agree, false teacher, okay? If the, we just haven't researched it the way you have, all right? Since neither of us are here to defend Benny Hinn or attack Benny Hinn, that's not, that's not our goal, um, nor is it the scope of our ministries. No, I couldn't say that. I, I don't know the man. I don't know enough about his message because, like I said, I, I don't watch Christian TV in, in general. Yep. Everything you said here is true. Then he's not a brother. Right? But I don't know that. Remember, folks, Dr. Michael Brown watched a Benny Hinn video on YouTube. Finally. But he only watched that one, and he somehow missed all of the other videos that are there. Like this one. Three Secrets for Prosperity in Your Life. Let's listen to a little bit more of him twisting the book of Job. In Job 36, 11, that's the real tough one. That's the real key we have to obey. But because it says, if they obey. If, you see, like, like we all can love. We say, well, I love Jesus, and I want to you know, know his word and walk with him and serve him. But giving is very important. Giving is that act that releases the blessings of God, if they obey. Conditional. I'm reading Job 36, 36 11. If they obey and serve him, they will spend their days in prosperity, their years in pleasure. That's the key then, isn't it? I hope that by now you're not surprised to learn that Benny Hinn is misappropriating one of the speeches from the book of Job from one of Job's not very good friends, basically making an if-then statement. If you do this, then God is obligated to do that. Again, it's the bad guys, quote-unquote, in the book of Job who say things like that. The real point of the book of Job is to say that God is totally sovereign, and we are in no place whatsoever to tell God what he should or shouldn't do. But Benny Hinn has misused Job 36.11 so much that he assumes that his audience will already be familiar with it. And you all remember Job 36.11. If we obey and serve the Lord, obey and serve him, we will spend our days in prosperity. All these promises I just mentioned are conditional on giving. You have to obey the Lord. If we obey and serve him. Job 36, 11. If we obey and serve him, we will spend our days in prosperity and our years in pleasure only when we obey and serve him. You can give right now to the Lord's work, Benny Ministries. You can go online. And God delights in our prosperity when the prosperity comes properly through his word. And the Bible says in Job 36, 11, if they obey and serve him, if they obey and serve the Lord, they'll spend their days in prosperity. They'll spend their years in pleasure. And then Job 36, 11, if I obey him and I serve him, I'll spend my days in prosperity and years in pleasure. And God wants to protect your future from harm, financial harm. And the only way is through obedience. If they obey and serve him, Job 36, 11 says, they'll spend their days in prosperity and years in pleasure. It's tough sometimes to give God finances, especially when God speaks about large amounts. You know, it, it really hurts. <laughs> but like I've said always, if it doesn't hurt, it doesn't work. But that's how we prove our love to him. Once we have given the Lord our hearts, it's easy to give him our money. And I also ask you to give because it's for your benefit. It's for your future. So God will bless you. So God will honor you. So when you honor him, he honors you. When you obey him, he blesses you. So They'll spend their days in prosperity, it says, if they obey, those who obey, Job 36, 11. So, and number three, I also ask you to give because it'll protect your future. It'll protect your future. So number one, God commands us to give. Number two, it honors him when we give. We declare our love and honor towards him. And number three, our future is protected. Now, the future of the world is not going to be a pleasant one. There's a lot of fear out there. But you can have pure security in God. You can have assurance in the Lord that you will never lack in the future when things are really bad. They're not just bad now. They're going to get a lot better or worse later. But we that believe the Bible know our day is going to get brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter. Our future is greater than our past. And as you give, you literally protect your future. You know what? I have lived as a believer now for over 50 years. I did not know any of this when I when, when I was young. In fact, it was quite a, 
an experience I had to learn through painful lessons, that giving is the key. Prosperity is promised to those who live righteously, obediently. The minute they sowed seed, the minute that sacrifice was given, the water came. Are you looking today to be blessed by God and you don't know where it's coming from? God says, get ready. I'm about to bless you. And all you have to do is give that offering. So when God sees that faith in action, he blesses the seed and multiplies it and gives it back to us some 30, some 60, some 100. According to our faith, it has to do with faith. Everything begins and ends with faith when it comes to the Christian life. So your seed must be planted. That's number one. Number two, you must render your seed useless. So you sow it and say, okay, now it's useless. This much is true. If you send your money to Benny Hinn, it will become useless. Except to Benny Hinn. He will take your money and he will do whatever he wants to do with your money. It's not a ministry. It's a giant wallet with the name Benny Hinn stitched on the outside. That was that a horrific, was a horrific demonic, demonic, terrible, terrible fundraising. fundraising. <laughs> Now, 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 now. Hey.